This is the 2023 Honda Ridgeline. It's the top trim level black edition. It has the HPD or Honda Performance Development Package, which unfortunately doesn't add horsepower under the hood. But that doesn't keep this truck from being, well, basically the Swiss Army knife of the midsize truck segment. And no matter what non-owners say in the comments section, even though they're repeating what they basically heard from other people, it is a real truck and it does have great functionalities. Just read the comments. The people who own these trucks have very little, if anything, negative to say. So let's take a look at exactly what we have. This is going to be a platinum white exterior color. It's going to have LED headlights, daytime running lights, and LED fog lights down there on the lower portion of the bumper. Honda Sensing is here, which is going to be right up here. It's located. It's no longer a radar, but really a camera system, so it's going to be more accurate and maybe even eliminate some of that overly aggressive issue with some of the driving aids. Under the hood is the 3.5 liter V6. It makes 280 horsepower, 262 pound-speed of torque. It's mated to a 9-speed automatic transmission. These trucks come standard, all-wheel drive. As of 2021, front-wheel drive was removed, basically from the truck's ability to have. You don't get that anymore. It's no longer an option. So if you buy one of these, it's going to be all wheel drive. And how about MPGs? 18 city, 24 highway, 21 combined. And according to Honda, you should use 4.8 gallons of gas for every 100 miles you drive. Tire and rim size, tire size comes in at 245.60. So 245 width, 60 on the sidewall size. That's actually very good because that's part of what contributes to such a smooth ride quality with these trucks. And the HPD wheels, these are 18 inch wheels, by the way. And for those of you who like to know, you see the gloss black mirrors there. They do have the turn signal indicators built in. And let me dig the remote out of my pocket here. There is the remote. The other question I know people like to know, does it have remote start? It's nothing new here with the Ridgeline, but it is there. So what exactly does the Black Edition add? In fact, the Black Edition trucks, you might say, well, that's white. It's not black. They come in three different colors. You've got the Platinum White, Crystal Black, and Sonic Gray. So it's going to add the Black Edition badging, which is actually not on this truck. Kind of interesting, I guess, because it's the HPD package, but that's going to add the graphics uh, the fender flares here and the HPD badge on the tailgate back there. But as far as the Black Edition goes, it's going to add features such as Black Edition badging that would normally be here. Uh, the interior is going to have the Black Edition trim. It's also going to have the red accent trim here or accents within the seats. I don't know if you can see that very well. You can probably see it here better but it's going to have that plus the red ambient lighting. We'll take a look at that a little bit better later on through the infotainment screen. And ultimately, that's about it. There's not a whole lot going on where all of that is concerned, but this truck is so versatile in so many ways. You do have an unfortunately and surprisingly non-dampened tailgate right here. That would be nice to see. So you have the conventional style tailgate that opens that way. You've got multiple tie downs. There's actually four total in here. You also have the built in audio within the bed. This truck can tow between 3,500 and 5,000 pounds. But one of my favorite features here is the lockable bed trunk. And you can do so much with this. You can haul multitudes of items back here. You can store things back here. Since it's lockable, you can leave them in there for as long as you want to. You can partition this area off. There's three different areas you can partition, making four different bays, basically, to use for, well, whatever you want. And if you fill this area with ice or you clean off some dirty, muddy boots or whatever at the end of the day, when the water needs to be drained, well, there's how you do it, the built-in drain plug. So you can do so much. It's very versatile back here in this area. And your spare tire is here. That tray comes out and fits against this area right here, and you can gain access to everything. Now, one thing that's interesting here is you have 1,509 to 1,583 pounds of capable payload. But what does that really equate to as far as what you can really fit back here? Well, as far as the width of the actual opening back here goes, 
you have 51 inches worth of space. And with the tailgate in its up position, you have 63 inches worth of space. If you leave the tailgate open and tie things in correctly and take advantage of all of the available space back here, you're going to be looking at roughly 83 inches. Now, obviously, you could extend things out a little bit further. We can make a little blooper there for the video. We're not going to hold on to that. We're just going to let it hit the ground. No big deal. But you could obviously extend things out further if you wanted to. Just make sure, obviously, everything's tied in, just like you would do with a regular truck, even though people say it's not really a truck. One thing that is missing that hopefully when Honda redesigns the Ridgeline, they will add are door bins on these rear doors because, well, there are none. Now you do have a little bit of space up here between the cup holder and the area right here where you could put snacks or, well, whatever the rear seat passengers want to put in. And the thing I like back here is you have additional storage capacity because you have the area back here where you can put the seats up. As you can see, I've got one up and one down as far as the seat cushions go. You also have the cargo tray and you can put that a lot of different places right there. We're going to put that down and hop inside. And unlike some Honda SUVs, you do have the seat back pockets on both sides. I don't know why that wouldn't be the case in all vehicles. Obviously, you're going to have the fold down armrest with quite a bit of space there for the arm to fit on, plus two drink holders and more space for the snacks or whatever anyone wants to put in there. And then we also have the rear air conditioning vents, only two USB ports. I'm still waiting to see some of these manufacturers of these vehicles put in three because you can have three people back here. So why not have three USB ports for three passengers? And real quick, let's see if I can do this without making the shot too shaky, hopefully. We'll show you the conventional size sunroof. What do you want to see Honda do sunroof-wise when they redesign the Ridgeline? Would you rather see that conventional size or a panoramic? And by the way, there's no Swiss Army knife truck, we'll say, that's complete unless it has a power outlet in the bed. And in this case, it most certainly does. Door bins are found in a plentiful way, upper and lower here on the front doors. So if that's what you want, well, that'd be a good thing to do, a call shotgun. You also have the red contrast stitching. You're going to have plenty of space within the interior. These are very nice, comfortable trucks, by the way. Interior is plentiful with spaciousness. There's something else you get with the Black Edition package, the Black Edition stitching into the rear seats. And while this is gloss black, I don't think you're going to get a lot of fingerprints on there, unless you have kids, maybe. But that's what you have there, a deep glove box, and then wireless charging, a 12-volt power outlet, USB connection. And tell me what you think. Would you like to see Honda do away with that push-button shifter when they redesign the Ridgeline, hopefully, for 2024? More gloss black, there's quite a bit. You might be more likely to get fingerprints on this area. The cup holders are there, and there is some more of that red contrast here. Probably kind of hard to see at this angle, but it is there. Another USB and 12 volt down there, and quite a bit of space within the interior of the center console. And there is the conversation mirror if parents want to have a conversation using their eyes with the kids in the back seat, I guess and an auto dimming rear view mirror. And speaking of mirrors, what about the side view mirrors? Those are heated, power adjustable, but manually folding side view mirrors. So I'll show you that real quick, as you can see there, in case you were wondering. And there are two settings for seat memory here on the driver's side. So as you can see, one, two right there, and then all of the typical, con typical controls outside of a tongue twist <laughs> that you would expect there. Here are the controls for changing the position of those power side view mirrors. You can use econ mode right there and a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. And we'll hop inside and hit the push button start and get everything up and running. Show you the dashboard there, the instrument cluster, everything. Well, nothing changing for 2023, but very easy to use, still very effective and no problems there. There are your, your steering wheel mounted controls, if I can get that out. And you can see that there are paddle shifters here. There are multiple driving modes by the way you have drive and sport. Some people call the S there sequential, even though that's really not what it is. It's called sport mode. But let's go through the driving modes, normal, snow, mud, and sand. So a lot going on there. 
a very simple to use infotainment screen here. I like to make that point because Honda has one of the easiest to use. And as you can see, there's that red lighting that I was talking about earlier. So that's part of that black edition package. You're gonna have your built-in navigation right here. That makes things super easy. There are so many options there for anything you need to do. And then we'll go in reverse and look at the multi-view rear view camera. Again, you can see the red highlighted there with the accent lighting for kind of the backlighting on those buttons right there, if you call them buttons, but just where you push on the screen to change the view of the camera. And the driving experience, well, it's kind of Swiss Army lifelike in a way as well because, well, it offers a multitude of capabilities. And while, yes, there could be more ground clearance, some say this truck needs low range gearing, even though others will say even when they have low range gearing in their vehicles or in their trucks, they don't use it. So it is what it is. But being all wheel drive, it's gonna be great in the snow, especially with the snow mode. Uh, these trucks have been used on snowy days and when it's been icy, even here in Northwest Louisiana, that does happen occasionally around here. And those who have tried that out, I haven't had a chance to do that myself, but I've talked to some of the sales staff that has, and they said they had absolutely no trouble. The ride quality is very good, thanks to independent rear suspension. And, you know, for the right person, there is a very strong demographic for this truck, no matter what people say. But those who maybe don't need a full-size truck and don't need to tow on a regular basis and tow a lot, well, this is really a great truck for that. It does have, like I say, some, well, we'll say light to above upper light, maybe uh, off-roading capabilities. So depending on what you have, well, you can take these trucks off-road quite well. The one thing I do recommend if you plan on doing that kind of thing, or maybe you live in an area where uh, you just have to drive where you're almost off-road, a lot of dirt roads, back roads, whatever, the thing about that that you don't want are the side steps on the side of the truck. This truck's so low to the ground that it doesn't need side steps anyway. That's more of just a, a cosmetic feature than anything else because, well, it's just not that high off the ground. But I definitely would not recommend having that if you're going to deal with a lot of, well, off-roading, we'll say, getting into your driveway if you live in the mountains or something like that. One thing I like to point out here as far as these Hondas go is if you've never had something such as an infotainment screen and all the other safety features and different technology that is offered here, well, don't be afraid because Honda has some of the easiest to learn in the entire industry. So a very enjoyable truck to drive. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Honda comes up with when they do finally redesign this truck, which I hope will be for 2024. As of right now, there is no official word on that. So I don't want to say anything to get anyone's hopes up, but we'll keep our fingers crossed and hopefully that's going to happen. To learn more about the model in today's video, visit the link in the description for a detailed comparison between trims and pricing for the vehicle we featured or any vehicle you may be interested in. These pages feature information such as our recommended trim level based on price, value, and features. Thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. We look forward to seeing you next time.